All right, so hi guys. Uh, I am Ashutosh Agarwal, and I'm a software engineer at IBM. Uh, so today I've got a couple of minutes to share and talk about a recent project that I worked on in the blockchain space involving uh, Hyperledger Fabric. So very quickly, with a quick show of hands, who is familiar with Hyperledger or worked with it before? All right, that's pretty solid. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so Hyperledger is essentially uh, an open source uh, framework that allows us to build blockchain applications. And uh, it's essentially uh, used in permissioned environments, which means that all the stakeholders uh, or members of the network would need some sort of approvals or permissions to enter the network, right? Um, yeah, so today the use case that we're going to be talking about is uh, a customer loyalty program, right? And these programs are essentially used by companies to reward their customers uh, for being returning customers and making multiple purchases on their platform. Uh, so, so that's great for customers because they're getting some free merchandise, maybe at the end of the day through the points. And it's great for, for companies because they get to keep these customers. And uh, yeah, they get to uh, give them these incentives of, of free discounts or merchandises or whatsoever. Um, yeah, so today, in, in this use case, I wanted to go over uh, why did we incorporate blockchain into the space and how does it really benefit uh, this particular application, right? So there's two things here. Uh, the very first thing that I wanted to sort of discuss is trusted transactions, uh, which means that uh, we could have uh, any transaction done between the customer and the companies would uh, now be done in a trusted space, right? Uh, and the focus here would be the points. Uh, the second aspect that I want to focus on is permissions, uh, in the sense that if there are, let's say, multiple companies that are partnering up uh, so that they can you know, provide their entire customer pool uh, with the ability to collect points uh, and then redeem them later for free merchandise, uh, it uh, allows them, or we have to sort of make sure uh, that one customer on this platform cannot see the transactions of other customers. Or from the point of view of a company, uh, one company cannot see the transactions, or they can only see transactions of which they are a part of, right? Um, yeah, so that's what we are discussing today. Um, I want to quickly uh, do a demo of this, uh, of this application that we have built here. And it's completely open source, and it's online on GitHub. So feel free to fork it and make your modifications uh, in, in the future. Uh, so let's get started with this. Another thing that I wanted to actually uh, sort of showcase is how we can easily deploy and set up our own blockchain network locally on our systems without having to like sort of manage all the Docker uh, images and all the Docker containers that, that we have to worry about, right? Like order or uh, certificate authorities or uh, like our org MSPs and things like that. Uh, so the way I do it is with this cool extension on VS Code. It's called the IBM Blockchain Platform Extension. And it's available freely on, under the extensions. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what I have right now on my VS Code editor. On the left-hand side, you can see that I have my local fabric running. And I can sort of just modify the status of my, of my local fabric by simply just like clicking that button, and I can restart or stop or whatever, terminate the entire ledger. Um, on my right-hand side, I have uh, the contract, which is essentially the chain code that is the business logic of my customer loyalty. right? And this would be. Uh, essentially flashed onto the peer and run on the peer um, on the blockchain platform. So let's go in, and the first step that we would have to do is uh, package this, uh, this particular contract that we have into a smart contract project. Uh, so again, I can easily do that through VS Code, the extension. Uh, I'm just going to select this first option, package. Let me go ahead and do that. And we can see that it successfully packaged it. The next step. Um, that I'm going to do is install this package onto my r existing running Fabric container. Um, so let me install it. It asks me which peer I want to install this on. And there's a default peer, so I'm going to select that. I'm going to select the customer loyalty uh, contract that I just packaged. Um, 
Let's do that, and we see it's successfully installed, right? The next step would be, now that I've successfully deployed this package, the next step would be to run it on the peer. Um, so for that, I'm going to instantiate. So I'm just clicking that there. It asks me uh, to which channel I want to connect my peer to. Uh, I'm just going to go by the default, my channel in this case. It verifies the smart contract package that I have. Um, and finally, it asks me, is there any function uh, something akin to a constructor that I want to execute as soon as my peer started with this particular smart contract running, right? So here we can see below, I have this instantiate function, which is sort of like an init, uh, a constructor of sorts. So I'm just going to uh, type that in. Uh, hopefully I got that spelling right. Uh, let me do that. And it asks me, are there any arguments that I want to pass in? There's none at this point for my particular application. So let me go ahead and instantiate that process. Um, and essentially what it's trying to do is it's trying to run the smart contract on my peer now. Uh, while it's instantiating, let me actually show you um, what's happening here on the Docker side. So we know there's so many entities involved right, in, in any blockchain platform. And here I just did a Docker PS, and we see that we have like a, a certificate authority. We have an orderer. There's a certificate authority. And we have our peer. Um, once this is successfully instantiated, we should be able to, and if this function instantiate was successfully um, uh, executed, we should be able to see these logs where you know I've written an initial the ledger was initialized and uh, yeah the success of the uh, initialization of the ledger. So let's go back here. I think we have successfully instantiated. So let's go back here and we see there's a peer. Let's go in. And let me take that, and let's check the logs. All right, so here I'm looking at the logs. So this is on the blockchain, on that particular Docker container. And I see that we have successfully in initialized the ledger. So we can pretty much proceed at this point. Uh, so the next step that we have this is we need to sort of create the users involved, right? So first, I'm going to enroll my admin, which is the case with most blockchain platforms. Uh, I have a script here, enroll admin.js. So let me just go ahead and do that. Going to execute it. And we see that successfully an uh, admin user was created, uh, which can, in the future, create more multiple users, multiple partners, which are companies, or multiple customers. Um, let's see that, actually. So we can go here. And I'm going to look at my certification uh, certificate wallet here. And I see that when I ran this, uh, this script, I now have new certs for admin generated, um, which are right here and get me used by the admin user. Um, at this point, let me go ahead and start my application. All right, so we have that running. Let me go back here. All right, so this is where we have our application. And we see we have two two types of stakeholders here. One is a member, which is nothing but the customer, and the partners would be uh, the companies that have partnered together to provide this sort of uh, loyalty program for all the customers. So let me quickly go in and register one customer. Uh, let's say I give them some sort of account number, and I give them an access card, AC1 in this case. Uh, let me give them a random name to Tom Moody. Tom at example.com, and let me give a random phone number. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and register this. All right, first name must be letters only. All right, there was a space there. Let's try that again. So we're going ahead with the member registration, and we see that it's successfully registered on the blockchain network. What this means, essentially, is that now a user called this particular customer, Tom Moody, exists on the blockchain network, and he has certs that have been generated for them. So we can go ahead and check that, actually. Um, let me check that here. Um, if we go and look back at the wallet, we had initially seen just the admin user and the certifications here. But now we see this uh, access card one, which was for, the, for Tom Moody user, and we see the certs right there for them, which allows them permission to enter the Fabric network. Um, so let's go, go back, and I'm going to register a partner, which would be a company. Let's give them 
a particular ID and let's say let's give them an access card, so another cert for them. Uh, and let me say IBM, for instance. Let's register that. Um, this is successfully done, and as always, we should see a new cert update in the wallet, right? With for the particular um, for the particular partner. Let's go back and now actually use this loyalty program from the point of view of a customer, right? So I'm going to log in as Tom Moody. Um, you're going to use their credentials with which they signed in or signed up. And well, here's the dashboard that they would see. So they see that there's this Tom Moody user, and currently they have zero points because they haven't really made any purchase. Um, so the first thing they would do is assume this is some sort of uh, like a, an online shopping platform experience or something, and they select like the company that they want to buy products from. In this case, I just um, I enroll just one company, so that's IBM. Let's select that, and let me say purchase item some item X for dollar twenty and as a process, I will earn 30 points. So let's go ahead and do that. So we see that transaction was successful, and we see that Tom Moody is now updated with 30 points, right? Uh, let me check in the transactions. Um, here we can see that um, in my points allocated transaction, I made a transaction at this time uh, with this particular partner, which was nothing but IBM, and I did a transaction of worth 30 points. Right? And this was the transaction ID. I can use this at any time to go and verify on the blockchain block. Right? Uh, the same thing for I can go ahead and use these points to redeem something. Uh, and I see I can redeem, say, item A for 50 points or so on. So I'm going to earn some more points. Let's like purchase something worth $100. Uh, earn 200 points here. Right, let's select IBM. Select that. And I just successfully made a purchase, and we see I'm updated with 230 points. Let's go and redeem that. Uh, again, I can select any of the companies which are part, part of this partnership of companies right, in the program. Again, there's just one company, so I'm going to go for it. Uh, and I'm going to say, let me get item A for 50 points. So I'm redeeming this. Um, I do that, and I see my points got decreased. And hopefully, this, this merchandise gets sent to me. And in my transactions, I can sort of see now that I made two uh, purchases from IBM. I see that partner ID right here. One was worth 30 points, and one was worth 200 points. And I also redeemed points which were worth 50 from that particular partner. Uh, let's go in and quickly check from the point of view of the partner. So if I remember the credentials right, let's log in as IBM. All right, so we see that we are logged in as IBM. And on their front dashboard, I see that the total points accumulated to all the customers are, which were part of this platform or part of this network is 230. Um, and I see that the total points redeemed against me is 50. If I go in and look at the transactions, again, I would be able to see only transactions involving me. So I would only see transactions involving this particular partner and so on. So I see. Uh, someone made uh, someone a member with this particular ID made a transaction here, and then they also redeemed the transaction. Uh, yeah, so that was it from my side today uh, in my short talk, and uh, I'm gonna sort of leave you guys with the code right here. Feel free to take pictures of that. Um, you can contact me for any questions, uh, and as always, happy blockchaining.